This is a chapter from Overshare, the Lynx.net story. Find the rest at overshare.lynx.net. By now, Justin's Lynx from the Underground comprised hundreds of pages in a sprawling jumble of personal hypertext. Some of my readers complained that they couldn't tell what was new when they arrived at the front page. So, the night of January 10th, 1996, I resolved to update the front page of Lynx.net with a new entry every day. Now, before I would crawl into bed, I would crawl over to my keyboard and hammer out a new entry on my personal website. I didn't update every day, but here I began an ongoing record of my life for years, for decades. My web traffic was costing me some money, so I asked my readers for donations, and checks and cash began arriving in the mail. I'm a 20-year-old guy, I can write about my life, and thousands of people will come and read it every day. This is really a revolution. And I think, huh, wait, I'm from a wealthy background, I'm white, and I'm a guy. This is kind of the same thing that's been happening in publishing for the last four or five hundred years. So maybe what I should do is see, give it to other people, what, whether, this, whether this can catch on in other right. demographics. I decided to hit the road and share the web. I reached out to my readers and arranged a bus trip from Philadelphia to San Francisco through the American South, Midwest, and Southwest. I would stay with folks I met from my website and teach anyone in their community how to use HTML to express themselves on the web. I shared the potential for personal online publishing with anyone I could find. In cafes and schools, nightclubs, and a halfway house for the mentally ill in Wichita, Kansas. Folks like that don't have much of a voice in commercial media, so giving someone a chance to share their truth online might help us all understand people we might not see in our everyday life. I believe that the web could promote empathy if we shared our stories, if we shared difficult truths, if people who weren't us published online, we could learn about each other. The best kind of computer world is where it would be like a storybook, you know, because if you think about the web, right, you can like link to stuff. Imagine if all your relatives had web pages and all their relatives had web pages and like some of your dead relatives had web pages telling stories about back before you were born. I updated from the road with photos and stories. I wrote about women I was attracted to, people I disagreed with, I repeated stories and jokes I was told, and I profiled strangers I met on my travels. Real life is fascinating. Sometimes it got edgy in that dinner table conversation was not necessarily something you wanted to read about on the internet the following evening. In the earliest days of the web, you would find most websites through links or lists of sites. But as the web grew from tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands of sites and servers, people shifted from browsing links to searching. They pulled up early web search engines like AltaVista, InfoSeek, Lycos, or Hotbot. And they would invariably search their name and they might find that their old pal Justin Hall had written some of the only information available about them on the internet, including my description and interpretation of their life as I knew it. For example, the summer after high school, my computer love led to a job doing IT networking for the Boston Consulting Group. I was allowed to attend their company summer retreat, and I had a real good time singing drunken karaoke with one of the senior partners who suggested she would fly me to the Caribbean the next day for a hookup. I ended up going back to a room with someone from accounting. I posted my rundown of this amazing corporate bacchanalia and drunk people have sex was a leading search result for the Boston Consulting Group for many years. Executives from BCG called and asked if I would take down my pages about my time at the company. I wouldn't, but I removed all the individual names to protect my former colleagues. I was learning that a more popular internet meant more scrutiny for my personal writing project. I have vivid recollections of your telling stories on your blog, family stories. For years, 
you revealed the most intimate details of our family life on your blog, which was widely read. And that resulted in criticism and hurt feelings among family members. Uh, and increasingly at family gatherings, uh, people were not willing to speak candidly in front of you. I was hearing from more and more people who were unhappy to be identified in my web pages. My goal was never to hurt anyone. My goal was to try and help people see what it was like being me and maybe see what other people were like. I began to change the way I wrote online. I stopped using full names and I would drop identifying details or avoid linking people to sensual psychedelic fun. I was contacted by a filmmaker named Doug Block. Doug was a veteran documentarian who was fascinated by these people who were now sharing the intimate details of their life on the World Wide Web. He asked if he could interview me for his new film homepage. Well, I don't know if you're, you're planning on running, talking to this guy, Justin Hall. He's a, you should talk to him, he's great. And he's really done it all on the web. And he is a cyber star. I learned that Justin is a web pioneer whose site attracts over 7,000 daily readers and whose writing style has been favorably compared to Kerouac and Ginsberg. I decide if Justin's creating some kind of 90s online version of On the Road, I want to go along for the ride. I was excited that someone else wanted to document my life because it was so much work documenting it myself. Years later, watching Doug's film homepage, I learned that it can be strange and a bit unsettling to have someone else portray your life and relationships. In those days, I worked to make the internet a part of my life in every way possible. At school, instead of printing out assignments and handing them in, I wrote my papers as web pages and emailed URLs to my professors. So many of my college essays consisted of me applying whatever we were learning to the internet. One semester, I taught a class on web ethics to a few volunteer students and faculty. For my final project in a psychology class, I did an interpretive dance about the internet. I graduated from Swarthmore in 1998 and kissed President Al Bloom on the way out. Treat yourself to more of Overshare, the links.net story. You can find too much information at overshare.links.net.